we can think about a nearly infinite variety of possibility. And our goal is to figure out the one or the ones that accurately reflect our own universe. You gotta question everything now. Truth has been compromised, man. You know what I mean? No matter what side of whatever you are yeah. on, truth has been has been seriously compromised because there's a counter opinion to everything is a portal to hell being opened by the large hadron collider the scientific method is arguably the most significant invention ever made by humans we have evolved from simple monkeys into species that are able to shape the environment according to our desires through the rigorous process of exploring the natural world creating experiments and making observations. We have created cities, traversed oceans and ventured into reaches of the universe that are both microscopic and cosmic in scope over the past several thousands of years. Through the power of scientific exploration, we have split the atom, wiped out certain illnesses, created worldwide communication systems and walked on the moon. The problem is that science is always on the periphery of human knowledge. Every experiment sheds light on an unknown and occasionally the unknown pokes back when we prod it. What is actually taking place at CERN? Are they poking at what should be left alone? Do they intend to create a portal to another dimension? Well, let's find out. Although the overall results of scientific research have been positive for our species, experimentation has drawbacks and sometimes it causes the world to bend in the wrong direction with catastrophic consequences. Because of this, some people were worried that when the Large Hadron Collider at CERN was about to go online, it might produce a black hole and consume the planet. Put in mind that a Russian physicist saw a personal Big Bang in 1978 as a result of a particular particle accelerator. Working on a particle accelerator that he thought was not operational was Anatoly Bogovsky. Bogovsky was in the room to perform maintenance, but the warning lights had also failed. So when he had no indication that the accelerator had been in use while he was there. While being examined, Bogorsky leaned into the beam's direction and was hit by a burst of high energy protons that exited his face on the left side after passing through the back of his head. While a dose of radiation hundreds of times greater than the level that would have killed him passed through his brain, Bogorsky claimed to have seen a dazzling flash of light. Amazingly, Bogorsky was able to survive the incident. He didn't, however, come out of the collision unhurt. His head's left side swelled in the days following the collision and the area where the beam made contact with his skin burned and peeled. Subsequently, he developed seizures, mental exhaustion, loss of hearing in his left ear and eventual facial paralysis. In 2010, when the Large Hadron Collider first began colliding subatomic particles, there was a surge of concern that scientists might have unintentionally brought about the end of the world. Uneasy critics warned that the LHC tests these researchers were carrying out could produce a tiny black hole that would eventually swallow up the entire planet. These criticisms were obviously in error. We're still here in 2023, and although it occasionally seems like we're in a hellhole, we are still a pre-apocalyptic society, at least for the time being. In fact, the LHC operated smoothly at the European Council for Nuclear Research, CERN headquarters, for a number of years before being shut down in 2018 for improvements. The discovery of the Higgs boson, a fundamental particle that has earned the moniker God Particle, was made possible during that period thanks to some of the largest worldwide scientific collaborations ever to take place. The subatomic particle known as the Higgs boson is thought to have been crucial to the universe's development following the Big Bang 13.7 billion years ago. The research done at CERN is also crucial to future advancements in everything from computing to medicine. Now, though, as the Large Hadron Collider launched a new phase of research, which will see it produce a collision at unprecedented energy levels, 
doomsday worries returned. They aren't just looking forward to black holes this time, either. Try doors to the multiverse, demonic portals, and gates to hell. This is what we may anticipate if the conspiracy ideas are true. What's really happening 175 meters beneath the France-Switzerland border? The LHC, the largest particle collider in the world, was constructed by CERN between 1998 and 2008 and is located close to Geneva in a tube with a radius of 17 miles and a depth of up to 175 meters. How does it work? High-energy particle beams are accelerated to almost the speed of light and then collide at four points. The goal is to provide answers to some of the fundamental physics-related queries, including those about the interactions of subatomic particles, theories of space and time, and Einstein's theory of relativity. Why is it so terrifying? Others have attempted, although failed, to sue CERN in the past for endangering public safety, indicating an underlying concern about the negative implications of adopting the novel technology. Black holes and the hauntingly called strange matter are the two main concerns surrounding the utilization of the Large Hadron Collider. The first concern should come as no surprise, because one of the LHC's objectives is to simulate small black holes that may hold information about the Big Bang. With little to no technical knowledge, you might say this sounds like a terrible idea. The second worry is that the high-energy LHC experiments would create strangelets, a fictitious substance made of strange matter that might infect the substance that makes up the rest of the planet. That's a lot of quotation marks, but there's a good reason for it. Strange matter is currently only theoretical and hasn't been seen in space, where high-energy photons are constantly bouncing about. After three years of renovations and maintenance, the LHC reopened last year. All of this means that the likelihood of the LHC discovering subatomic particles that are wholly novel to science is currently higher than it has ever been. It was hoped that the discoveries it produces would ignite the biggest physics revolution in a century. In addition to thinking they might discover a brand new fifth force of nature, researchers were looking for signs of dark matter, an unobservable element that makes up the majority of the universe. ATLAS is a 46-meter long and 25-meter high detector. It's one of the four LHC devices that examines the particles the LHC produces. It's currently more potent than ever. There are four such detectors at the LHC, and each one conducts a distinct experiment. Protons, which make up the atom's core, are driven to speeds close to the speed of light around a ring with a radius of 17 miles, colliding exactly in the middle of these enormous detectors. Even smaller particles are produced by the collisions, and these scatter in various directions. Like identifying the species and features of an animal from its tracks, the detection systems follow their course and energy, and it is this trail that reveals to the scientists what kind of particle it is. The smaller particles produced by the collisions are almost all already well known to science. Physicists are searching for signs of new particles, which could result from collisions but are thought to occur very infrequently. The key to unlocking an entirely new perspective on the universe, according to physicists, lies in these unidentified particles. The biggest change in physics thinking since Einstein's theories of relativity would result from their discovery. The remodeled apparatus has a significantly better probability of producing and locating the infrequently occurring new particles. Significant advancement has also been made in the collection and analysis of collision data. Data is gathered from each of the four detectors in the rebuilt LHC at a scorching pace of 30 million bits per second. Of course, this is just too much information for a human mind to process but even a single collision 
could contain the key nugget of information proving that one of the new particles the researchers are looking for actually exists. The software for the LHC has been updated, so it now automatically scans through all the data that has been gathered and, using the most recent AI techniques, it finds and saves the measurements that could potentially be of interest for the scientists to analyse. The LHC's instruments are more sensitive and will now display collisions in high detail, making it easier to spot new particles. The standard model is the name of the most prevalent theory of particle physics. Despite having a dull name, the theory has been incredibly successful in explaining how subatomic particles combine to form the atoms that make up our environment. The nuclear forces that hold atoms together and electromagnetism are two examples of natural forces that are used by the standard model to explain how particles interact. Yet the standard model is unable to explain gravity's workings or the behavior of dark matter and dark energy, two of the universe's invisible constituents. Due to the motion of galaxies in space, scientists are aware of the existence of these invisible particles and forces, which collectively make up 95% of the universe. But no one has yet been able to establish their reality or identify what they are. The LHC was designed to find these particles, which may help to understand how the vast majority of the cosmos functions. Dark matter can be spread out across the universe in computer simulations. LHC researchers expect to actually discover it. Evidently, since April of last year, beams have been moving through the accelerator and have proven stable enough to resume testing at higher energies than before, with a projected runtime of nearly four years. So, the widespread anxiety on social media. This panic comes in several flavors, in line with the internet's recent spiritual awakening, which has already seen conspiracy theorists migrate away from topics like Big Pharma and covert military activities in favor of Satanism, witchcraft, and the return of Atlantis. It's true that some researchers are considering the possibility of a multiverse in relation to the Higgs boson. This idea is likely to advance as more information is gathered over the next few years. But some internet conspiracies are even more absurd, like the theory that the latest experiments would create hell portals. Then there's the theory that altering the god particle at CERN will let spirits and devils loose that can invade your body. Evidently, identical demonic forces were also active in the years 2012 and 2016, which, to be fair, had different apocalyptic impacts. Will anything ever happen? For years, both in reality and in fiction, people have stoked worries about the Large Hadron Collider, the 2000 novel Angels and Demons by pseudo-intellectual author Dan Brown featured a scene at CERN where the Illuminati stole some antimatter to blow up the Pope. The notion that our Promethean thirst for knowledge and power could unleash unspeakable evils from another realm was recently revived by the Netflix series Stranger Things. But as with the majority, if not all, of the theories currently circulating online, this is all fiction. The comforting safety statement from CERN is also there. The LHC can achieve an energy that no other particle accelerators have reached before, but nature routinely produces higher energies in cosmic ray collisions. Whatever the LHC will do, nature has already done many times over during the lifetime of the Earth and other astronomical bodies. Fundamentally, if something truly terrible was going to occur, it would have most likely done so by now. Nevertheless, the energy crisis brought on by Russia's conflict in Ukraine is not just putting pressure on people's homes and places of business in Europe. Moreover, CERN and other scientific research facilities are being impacted. A town with 230,000 people would use about 1.3 terawatt-hours of electricity annually. 
which is how much CERN uses on average. Almost half of it comes from just the Large Hadron Collider. CERN is taking extra steps to reduce its energy consumption this year as the French government urges the country to embrace energy sobriety. This year, CERN will use the LHC 20% less than last year. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.